of, um, of, of education in Victoria. And we are the only Jewish organization that's authorized uh, by the government to um, enter into schools um, and to um, provide education. Um, not sure about everybody else, but my screen has just gone black. Shlomi, maybe it's just me. You might need to take over. Um, let me just check. Um, not sure why. If it, someone yeah, could let I'm us know. If, oh, yeah, all of us. You see it now? Uh, oh, it's back. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Governance, we have a very strong board um, who are all lay people in the community, professionals, um, that are chosen to oversee, um, you know, the workings and 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 the things we do at UGEB. Um, if you'd like to see that, it's all on our website, um, and you can see the the lovely people who govern our organisation. Um, quick little snapshot of our organisation. It's not just for preppies, um, not just for primary school. We provide um, what we call the UGEB Jewish Journey. Um, to students who are at non-Jewish schools or not at the Jewish schools. Um, and these programs are, um, are, are a, a sort of pick and choose. You don't have to do every single one of our programs. You can come in at one point, leave for a bit, come in again, or do all of our programs um, as well. So we are here for the community and these are our programs. We have three main programs in the primary school, our Hebrew Immersion Program, um, our Jewish Life Program and our Dovrei Ivrit, our Hebrew Speakers Program. And you'll hear about all of those programs coming soon. Later on, you know, for you to look forward to, for your kids to look forward to, uh, we have a Bat Mitzvah and a Bar Mitzvah Program. Uh, we support Hebrew as a language offering at Glenira um, Secondary College. We run a camp from grade threes all the way to year 12s, an annual camp a host of programs in the high school connecting our kids to J-Lunch, and we also um, oversee the BBYO youth group in Australia. Um, so that's all under our umbrella, um, sending kids on international conventions, uh, Israel program in year 10, and, of course, we have our, pro our program, our Project Kulanu, uh, which means all of us, and it's our inclusion program that we operate at um, a bunch of um, special schools uh, in our area. Um, I suppose there's one more thing that you'll hear about a bit later, and that is PJ Library. It's not on that slide, but we um, have recently collaborated with PJ Library to be their operating partner in um, Victoria and beyond. And you'll get some information about that and how you can get free PJ Library books um, every month delivered to your home, but we'll leave that for later. Um, before you, you see our team, and you're going to hear from um, our team very soon, and Shlomi, you met before, um, he introduced himself, Deputy Principal um, in charge of um, teaching and learning, also looking after the Dovre Ivrit program at the moment. We've got Dana Reef, which is our Hebrew Immersion Program HIP, um, our HIP Manager, um, and Bev, who is our Jewish Life Program Manager. Okay. Um, we have a whole uh, program, a whole series of initiatives to really appeal to our newest um, um, learners in our community, um, our preppies. Um, and um, there's a whole bunch of things um, that you can see on the screen here that you can partake in um, um, leading up to them joining um, in 2025. So I'll just give you a moment to have a look at that slide. Um, uh, all of the information is also available on our website, so you can check out um, our website after um, this uh, session and look up our Garinim or our introduction, intro to prep program on our website. Um, thank you, Itzik. Um, Just before we start, I do want to present what it is that we do, where we plan our lessons, and what it is your kids will be experiencing throughout our classes and throughout the year. As Itzik mentioned, at UGEP, we strongly believe that education is far more than the 
transfer of knowledge. It's a platform through which we connect our kids to our community, our values, our culture, and identity. But what is it that we actually do? So in what follows, I'm going to take you through the five, sort of five uh, main pedagogical pillars through which we plan our lessons and to which I'm also going to provide you a practical or a concrete example of what it is that we do on the ground. The first pillar is intentional learning design. We believe that each lesson should serve a purpose. And what do we mean by that? We try to go beyond the abstract of knowledge and to bring the experience, the practical experience to our kids. Let me give you an example. Not long ago, we celebrated Sukkot. So we did have the option to bring a set of well, the Arbat Aminim, Lulav, Ava, Eto, Das, for our kids. Not only that they saw before the, uh, the Arbat Aminim, but they were able to touch it, to smell it, to shake it, and to really experience what custom means. The feedback we got from our parents later on were that not only that were they enjoyed having the kids knowing about the Arbat Aminim and participating and engaging in the Sukkot activity, but also they were really impressed having the kids enjoying the Arbat Aminim and sharing with their friends what it is that they learned in our classes. The second pillar is learning through dialogue. Now, research, the research shows that when conversation happens in class, kids learn better. Very simple. So we do try to incorporate conversational-based learning. What does this mean in practical terms? Let's take a, an example from our Jewish life classes. In our Jewish life classes, we ask our kids what it is that you were do, what it is that you would be doing instead of, let's say, Noah. How would you feel going into the ark with all the animals? In our HIP, the Hebrew Immersion Program, we'd ask our kids, which color do you like the most? And play color catch with them. In our Dovei Evrit, we would let them explain about a of the uh, latest visit they had in Israel or a place they know in Israel and force their conversation around it. The third pillar is tailored learning. We do understand that we have different types of learners. So we try to incorporate every with every lesson different types of learning activities, from videos to songs, from coloring in to just fun. We do try to balance fun and knowledge. It's a bit hard, it's a bit tricky, but we do understand that to have our engagement up or to have your kids wanting to join and be part of our lessons, they need to have the opportunity to learn the way they do best. The fourth pillar is creating a safe and joyful environment. And this is a the sound of, 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 the, of, the, of what we do at UGEM. We do plan our activities to be fun and learning-based. However, we do understand that safety is a the sound of what it is that we do. Um, lastly is assessment and feedback. Now here we have two levels of assessment and feedback, the direct feedback and assessment we give to our kids and the, the assessment we bring to you. We are not looking for per perfection, but progress. And what do I mean by that? Uh, eventually assessment is designed not to stress your children out and our feedback is gentle and is focusing on progress, on positive progress, on achievements, not on what they did wrong, but what it is that they managed or excelled in. And this is also the feedback you receive. So you receive feedback that is focusing on the journey, on the level of Hebrew or the level of language acquisition. We always try to bring our reports better or to uh, um, be more engaged with you parents. So we are very open for any discussion when it comes to our pedagogical aspects of learning and when it comes to our reporting, evaluation, or again, any aspect of what it is that we do. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to focus on our different primary programs. We'll start with the Hebrew Immersion Program. Dana Riff is going to lead 
that, and later we'll move to our Dovoevri program, a program that is designed for our Hebrew speaker. Later we'll move to uh, um, Jewish life, we'll both present the idea behind Jewish life and what it is that they do, and we'll end with Project Ulan. Um, Dana. Right, good evening. Shlomi, there might be more people joining, just from Rebecca, if you want to let them in. Mm. Uh, so good evening, everyone. My name is Dana Reef, and I'm the program manager of the Hebrew Immersion Program. Um, again, you have a summary here. You are very welcome, and I encourage you to have a look at our website. You have all the details there or the curriculum. Uh, the program focuses on four aspects of inquiring a language, which is reading, writing, listening, and speaking. We also add uh, Israeli culture by celebrating the Chagim. Um, we have, for me, can you? One. And we have a, whoo, whoo, this one? This one, very fun. <laughs> Um, the program currently runs at uh, five um, schools um, and in each school we have a team of team leaders. Um, I'm the team leader at Gardenville. We have Ariel who is a team leader at uh, Caulfield Junior College. Sahar is a team leader at Caulfield, Caulfield South Primary School and Orel is a team leader for after school at Carnegie and uh, we also have a group online. Um, they we are all educators as well, so we all have classes. Um, we very much work as a team. Uh, we currently have uh, 15 educators that work with us. Um, the groups are primarily divided into um, the year levels, um, depending on the center. Which, where we start in prep, go through uh, year six. Um, we do find that uh, we always open to uh, more new enrollments. So we have students joining along the years and we accommodate them if they join and they don't have any background in Hebrew. We'll assess them. We'll work together with the parents. So um, with the small groups, we can ensure that the program is um, f facilitating everyone. Next, please, Shlomi. I think we have a uh, demonstration here of our preps at Caulfield South uh, singing a song for uh, Rosh Hashanah. So in this um, video, or in that video, we incorporated sign language, but was just one example. So we definitely teach through songs and stories so that the, the students will learn their vocabulary um, and it really brings them together. I mean, I had tears in my eyes every time I watch it. Uh, they, they they feel they're part of a community. They're very proud. They'll go around the school and sing the song. They'll come home and sing the song. Uh, so be prepared. If we do, when we do Chagim, there'll be lots of songs. Um, we have uh, where the programs, where we run the HIP program at the moment. So as I said, it's uh, currently at five different schools and one group online um, for students who live further out and can't attend the schools. Um, but again, we're happy for students who want to trial the online. Um, we're always looking 
to uh, grow our enrollments. Um, basically, um, the students need to attend the school to be in the program. Um, it, it varies between the centers, the centers is between two to three uh, sessions a week in the mornings and in the afternoon. At the moment, we only have Coatesville. It's one session, but it's a longer session. Um, I also want to um, yeah, just note that some of the schools, the prep start in term two, um, and that's just the agreement that we have with the school. Um, so the HIP, the Hebrew Motion program, it's um, it's a Hebrew language language pro program which develops a strong speaking, listening, re reading, and writing skills. In PrEP, we focus on uh, letter recognition. We understand that it's a big, it's a huge transition for the students from kinder to PrEP, as well as learning English. They have learned a whole new language that is completely the opposite. They write, <laughs> the direction is different. Um, so it's mostly recognizing the letters. Uh, knowing what they're called and uh, what their names are, it's done through various activities of coloring in, identifying the letters. We have games, we have cards. Um, uh, so, and again, we do the chagim. We'll focus on the vocabulary and different topics we go through, like um, colors, animals, family members, um, etc. Yes, Shlomi. Again, here you have our curriculum. I'll just go through our through the prep. It's on the website. I encourage you to go and have a look. Um, so we start out with our um, booklet, Lomdim Ivrit. It's a huge booklet, um, a very interactive for the kids. We don't expect, we know it's hard for the students. We don't expect them to sit for 45 minutes and work in a textbook. Definitely not. Some activities they will encourage them to do independently. They might work in groups, but definitely not 45 minutes sitting and working through a, a book. Um, we start by, uh, again, recognizing the letters and topics like colors, seasons, body parts, numbers. We'll do it some through a song. We'll usually start the lesson with a song. So again, they'll come back hopefully singing the Aleph Bet song <laughs> um, and learn other songs. Um, so you have here all the details of um, the additional books through the years, but I'll let you look through that later. I think we've got still quite a bit to go through. Um, I, I would like uh, to emphasize that the, the vocabulary they learn and the topics they learn, they are all relatable. So they'll start... Once they recognize the letters, once they start putting words together and sentences and stories, we'll start with uh, their own environment, how they introduce themselves, what class they go to, where do they live. From there, they'll talk about their family. They'll talk about um, their home. From there, they'll talk about their neighborhood and we'll teach them about, and this is what all parts of it are related to the Israeli culture. So Israeli songs, seasons in Israel. So it's very important for me when they learn how to read, they actually understand what they're reading. I think it makes it much more meaningful and interesting for the, the children uh, as opposed to just reading a text without having no clue what they're reading. Yes, Shlomi? Uh, there's uh, a few examples here of what our textbooks look like. So this, the Lomdim Ivrit, as I said, it's a huge uh, book um, that we are very proud of. Shlomi has put, put a lot, a lot of hard work into it. Um, um, the next book, we use a series of books that are called Granit Ivrit. Um, they beautiful, colorful books, very pleasant on the eye. In addition to the books, um, we provide homework booklets with instructions in English for this is where parents can get involved. Um, homework is not mandatory, but we find that 
encouraging your children to do homework and practice will definitely elevate their uh, level, um, make it easier um, and just more fun. Again, it's not compulsory um, and it's designed in a way that you can help them. <laughs> And of course, we're always here if you have questions, feedback, and it's it's changing. Um, we're adding things, um, and they we, we they really do enjoy it. We've had lots of feedback from students; they enjoy it. Is this Hebrew emotion? Um, so again, a bit of a summary about the program and a feedback from parents. I'll let you read that. I'll read it. My son was a student at the HIP program since prep. He studied Hebrew through this program and is now placed at the accelerator level for Hebrew at one of the Jewish schools. Our family as Hebrew native speakers are very lucky to have such a great program at our school, at our local public school, which is truly priceless. So we definitely say if we have students that start in prep and go and follow HIP from prep to year six, do their homework, um, get as much encouragement from home. They are definitely ready to join a, a Jewish school and join the Hebrew program there. Next, please, Shlomi. Um, another feedback, a feedback from another parent as a multiracial family. We explore Hebrew words through practical application in a day-to-day -day communication and through reading Jewish books allowing her to recognize characters and story plots. I highly recommend delving into deeper understanding of the Hebrew language through Ujeb's hip. So again, this is what I was talking about. Our curriculum and the books we choose, they are related to the student's life. We have uh, one of our books is called My Home. We'll teach the kids uh, different rooms in the house, um, furniture, how, how all the different things in the kitchen. And that those are things that are actually applicable. They can use them. And um, yeah, that's all yep. for me. For him. The second, I'm going to do it briefly. So the second primary, uh, the second um, program we have for primary school is the Vivit, or the program for Hebrew speakers. Um, and that program is a bit different than the rest as it's entirely in Hebrew. Um, as of now, we have two centers. We have one center at UJEB, which is in Beth Weissman, and the second center is at Tucker Road Primary School. And again, this is a Hebrew-speaking program, which means that some of and what we did here is we divided the lesson into two parts. The first part of the lesson is conversational-based. Uh, we can explore our curriculum or our curric yearly curriculum curricular activity on our website. Um, it's conversational based where we ask questions and kids have a, an opportunity for show and tell and so on. The second part of the Dovoyevit lesson is all about learning how to read and write, very similar to Hebrew, but we use sometimes different books that are more Hebrew speakers oriented, which means that the vocabulary levels are higher and um, the um, expectations are a bit different. Um, which programs, oh, when it comes to the Vavrit, we do focus on very particular aspects of the language. So similar to HIP and Jewish life, we focus on um, Israeli culture, geography in Israel, and Tikkun Olam. Now, separately, each of these divisions are different subjects, but together, or blending them, or when we bring them together, we create a different or a particular opportunity for our kids to expand their vocabulary and to enforce their ability or their, the opportunity they have to develop their language. Um, when it comes to, again, um, Hebrew for Hebrew speakers, this is our last year's curricular activity or curricular plan. And, it, well, if you can't read it, it's not for you. Uh, but if you can read it, this is what we do or uh, what we did in 2023. Um, this is, again, very similar to uh, Hebrew. This is a um, an assembly, end of term. Um, this is the prep um, class. 
um, last year. And here we see a very similar, a song they learned with one of our teachers, Verdariel. Okay. Um, so again, our classes are relatively small and it allows us to engage with each student um, um, personally, on a personal level. Um, we have two centers and roughly in each center we have around 30 kids. Um, the classes are divided by a year one and prep, year two and three, and four, five, and six. So in each center we have three different classes. Uh, Bev. Thank you so much. Thanks, Shlomi, and welcome, everybody. It's really lovely. This is my first year as Jewish Life Curriculum uh, Manager, and it's lovely to know that we have so many people interested in our prep program and our Jewish Life program in particular. So, our program runs as part of our Jewish calendar. We encourage our children to have lots of fun, learn all about the festivals and all about the traditions and our culture as Jewish people. And especially this is done in a very warm, wonderful environment. We have small classes. We are at the moment, we have been in 11 schools. We have wonderful educators who are young and vibrant and are full of wonderful sharing ideas. Um, our learners come in, some preps, as Dana mentioned, only begin uh, in the second term. Some prep learners begin right at the beginning of the year, and we are fortunate enough this year to have our special booklets that we have been um, editing, building, and making with lots of help from Shlomi and Rebecca and all our team um, to bring together the learning. Um, this slide that Shlomi's just shown is, and he's going to play now, is our Pesach Seder that we have. So every year we have lovely uh, get-togethers with families. We encourage you all to come so that we become one part of a big group and a family together. This is our Pesach Seder. I don't know if you want to play some of it, Shlomi. Okay. And your... your As you can see, everybody has a part and everybody gets involved. The families are encouraged to come and, and be part of the team and the learning. These are the key life, um, the, the learning areas that we have in Jewish life. And our pillars are built on these specific things. As you can see, in each term this past year, We've connected them very carefully to these pillars. And if you take time, and I hope you do, to have a look on our website, you'll be able to see that each thing is specifically chosen and the way in which we teach it is specific to each child. So we've we've chosen things. And just as an example, you can see we do all the Chagim, we cover them as a connection. We do a part on Israel so the children feel connected as well. And each thing, each theme that we choose is done with lots of fun activities in our workbook, with games, with songs, and you're encouraged to be part of that learning because in our workbooks, there's place to do a family activity as well, if you choose. Here, we, here's just some ideas, some photos of the things we've done. As you can see, we, we encourage all kinds of things and lots of creative activities Lots of things happen. We visit shuls when we do our values. We talk about Israel and our flag. We talk about the symbols of Judaism and what they mean when we discuss Chagim and Shabbat. And, of course, we use our Bible stories to build on the, the values and the Jewish values that we have and we hold so dear in our Jewish life program and we do as a Jewish people in our families. 
here are the the, um, the schools that we're in at the moment, and our program runs early in the morning. We have some schools that have a 45-minute program, and that is run at the school. So your child's enrolled at that school, and that's where we go. Our after-school programs, are some of them are um, just an hour, because that's what the school has requested, but they run for just on an hour and a half. Sometimes we have a break in the middle if the children we check out how the children are feeling. Um, as well as that, some of the schools, we do have children from other schools joining us. And so certain schools allow that and we welcome that too. Um, just so as, as a final, just one thing, yep. sorry, Shlomi, that we didn't put in is that the feedback that, that parents get, our, our educators are very open we are always available um, in, with email and phone, and we give a report um, to you uh, twice a year, in the middle of the year and at the end of the year, as well as that if there are ever anything, anything that worries you or that we need to address with you, we are always here to support you, your family, and especially your children in their learning. Thanks, Shlomi. Thank you, Bev. Um, Isik, would you like to explain about Project Kulano? Sure, thanks, Shlomi. Um, yeah, look, very briefly, we do run um, our Project Kulano um, at a, a bunch of specialist schools around um, Victoria um, and really making sure that we serve our whole community and we don't leave anybody out. Um, and it's a fantastic program. And if you have a child at a specialist school, we'd love to hear from you. If it's one of the schools that we go to, then that's great and we'd love to include them. Um, and if we're not at that school, we can talk about um, and being in that school. I think that that is also something that um, all of our parents should know um, for Project Colano and for all of our programs. Um, if uh, your child is at a school that we don't currently have a UGEP program, um, we'd love to talk to you about the possibility um, of starting one at your school. Um, if that's not feasible because of the numbers, um, there are um, possibilities of running um, a Jewish life program or um, HIP uh, program um, at our centre in um, Caulfield. So um, if we're not at your school, please get in touch with us so we can talk about the possibilities. Um, again, very excited to, about this new collaboration. Um, we um, just earlier this year, um, are the um, the uh, program partner for PJ Library. If you don't know much about PJ Library, um, in brief, um, it, there was a, it was the brainchild of a guy in America called Harold, Harold Greenspoon. Um, he thought that um, um, all Jewish kids um, should have um, Jewish books in their home, and then he actually built this PJ Library and now it's um, available in many countries. Um, Australia is one of them. There is a, a QR code on the screen, or you can jump on our website later. Um, and all you need to do is register, and then you'll um, get um, once a month for 10 months of the year. We kind of uh, stop over the holidays. Um, but 10 months of the year, you get um, a Jewish book delivered to your home um, for you to read as a family together. And we just also um, uh, recruited Hilla as our director of PJ Library. So she'll be um, starting in the new year um, programming and, and different activities for PJ Library. So if that's something that interests you, uh, jump on and register um, here or um, on our website. Um, UGEP School Parent Champions, so uh, UGEP exists as it says to support our community and we're just not just another service provider, but we are, want to build our community through education. Um, we are looking for parents to participate, take part and lead our committees. And if you are interested in taking a better or a bigger part in what it is that we do, um, let us know.
Um, we went through that already. Um, so uh, what are the next steps for you to, um, if you are interested to enroll for term one, 2025, please go ahead and enroll, which means to go to our website or give us a call. Now on our website, you will find um, an option to give me a call or to book a chat with me or to any of the program managers to have a private conversation about the program, what we offer and how to better uh, accommodate your uh, children. Um, the Below here, you can find the um, um, Garinim program, some of the activities we have. Um, and at the end of the year, we have an event on Friday, 13th of December, and back to school event on Sunday, 2nd of February. But other than that, during term four, which is now, you're more than welcome to reach out. If you do want your kids to experience what it is that we do, you're more than welcome to register and all for a um, um, a trial uh, session, free of charge, of course. Just bring them in and let and see what it is that we do beyond the nice words that you just heard. Um, again, this is a short synopsis of what is planned in the Garinim program. Again, a program that is designed to bring the preppies in, they plan the transition to be smooth as possible. This week we have a chat um, and later we have a, another uh, session in December and just before the year starts on February 2025. Um, key benefits to Garini Minsik, would you like to take this over? For sure. Oh. Um, so the Garni program really is is all about um, introducing your kids um, to um, to UJEB, to Jewish learning, to connecting to the community. Um, and again, just jump on our website and you'll be able to see um, other events that are coming up in the coming weeks. Uh, I think we can keep going. Keep that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can um, we can we can go and, to questions. Yeah. And <laughs> so yeah, now we get to the interesting part. Uh, we can go yeah. to questions. So, is there any any question, any um, anything you'd so like there, to? There were a couple of questions. I might start off with what was put into the chat, um, and there were some questions here. Um, the first one was: Do any of the programs offer any type of prayers and brachot? Um, so our programs very much are focused on the Jewish culture. Um, and so for our um, HIP and our Dovray RIP programs, they are very much language-based programs. Um, so there is not a focus on prayers or brachot in those programs. Um, and where we do focus a little more on prayers and brachot are in our um, Jewish life program. Um, and in that, we we really focus on a sort of a cultural connection and not on getting the kids to do a bracha or say a prayer, but rather learn it in terms of the kiddush on Friday night to equip them with the skills to be able to, to participate at home with the family. Um, and we, um, we really focus on that sort of cultural connection um, as well as that, we have a model seder, again, to introduce them to the seder, to the cultural, really to the cultural events that they are likely to participate with the family. And, and essentially, you know, our Jewish life program is about connecting them to the Jewish life that they'll experience at home. But um, I suppose I wouldn't call it a religious program as such, um, but the Jewish life program, again, has a cultural connection um, to our Jewish way of life. And so there is a, a place for, you know, the learning of Kiddush, um, songs for the Pesach Seder, et cetera. Um, and so that's where we we deal with um, that. But we don't have prayers as a weekly thing that we do. Um, we don't say brachot um, on a weekly basis either, um, only when it's part of the curriculum, what we're trying to learn. Um, now, another question about... Um, PJ Library, if you are registered already for PJ Library, um, you do not need to re-register. 
Um, it's just it just carries over. We've um, accepted all of the uh, structures and setups um, from the way they were before, and it's just continuing the way it is. Um, the registration really is for new families who haven't um, seen it, heard about it, or been interested in the past. Um, next question there is, if there is no prep for Term 1 at our school, do we enrol from Term uh, 1 or only from Term 2? We would highly encourage people to enrol as soon as possible. It's really helpful for us as an organisation to plan, to work out our staffing um, and all of that. So you'll see that we'll call for enrolments now and we'd love people to enrol now, even if it is in term two, um, but we will continue enrolments. Enrolments will be open um, until, until they start and, and beyond the start as well. So although we encourage it greatly, you're not gonna miss out if you don't enrol today, um, but if you know that's what you want, then please enrol today. <laughs> Um, I think that was the last question we have we have one on more question. Yeah. We have one, we have oh, one more sorry. question. About... Our prices, term prices or annual prices, prices are really interesting. So we work out our prices for on an annual um, basis. So we'll prepare our budget um, on what it costs us to deliver the program for the year. And then we divide it into four payments, so one payment each term. Um, so really it's you're paying for the year, um, but we divide that over four terms. Um, of course, um, if you find that the program isn't for you, if your child um, you know, needs a break, has too much on, and you, you want to withdraw from the program, you're able to do that too. Um, throughout the year, now policy of withdrawal is on um, is on our website. Um, you uh, pay per term. There's a direct debit system that we have. So before uh, the end of each term, we'll send you notification about when the direct debit will take place for the upcoming term, and give you an opportunity to let us know if you need to um, stop the program. Um, so you won't be debited for the next term. Um, so. I hope that answers that question. Um, the fees are annual, but broken up over the terms. Um, when starting prep, uh, term two at our school, do most families favour hip or Jewish life or both? Um, it really is a personal choice. Um, again, the, the, the basic flavour of hip is that is it is a Hebrew language program. You are learning the skills to read, write, and speak in Hebrew, not all in one year. It does develop over the years. Um, and and if you are, and if that's what you're looking for, then that's great. Um, our Jewish life program is really focusing on the way we live our Jewish life, festivals that we celebrate, the values that we that our that our tradition teaches us. Um, really, that that that's the focus of that. Um, it's up to you entirely. Um, you can do one, or you can do both if can they're I offered add, at your school. Can I add yes. to that? It's also uh, families choose uh, what's more convenient for them. That the if the program's in the morning, in the afternoon. Some families aren't morning families; they struggle. So yeah, it really varies. Our families that do both, our families that do only one, they they try this, they try that. So yeah, there's a whole combination. Yeah, I think that that specifically for prep families, um, it's really important to know that that often prep parents are a bit worried about overloading their kids, um, and I think that's very legitimate. You do need to worry about that. I think you need to choose what are the important programs that your kids are doing. And of course, being the UJ principal, I think that, um, you know, a Jewish education is very important, but this is a family decision. Um, so I think that you should, um, you know, really understand also that, you know, preppies can handle a lot, you know, and I think that rather than assuming that it's too much for them, let them start, let's see how it goes. And if, it's not working, then we can deal with that. But don't miss out um, for your children. Um, the last question we have before I open it up to others is, so my 
kid is going to Tucker Road Primary next year? Can she do classes at Coatesville? Um, so in general, if it's a before school program, it's very, very hard to do it at another school. Um, just the logistics of finishing at quarter to nine somewhere and getting to the other school by nine o'clock, it's really, really difficult. And, and we don't advise that. Um, if it's an after-school program and it's not offered at your school, then we need to seek permission from the particular school. And so please be in touch with us and we can see if we can, we can get that happen. We do um, have students joining an after-school at a different school. It is, it is definitely possible. Um, but it is a case-by-case -case basis, so you need to get in touch with us. And again, I want to add to that, there is also the option of the online. I know it doesn't suit everyone, but it's for the students that you know, and the parents that, do, that don't mind the online, it's a, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. And again, if we get, have um, demand, we can also open up an after-school session at um, our UGM headquarters at Beth Weizmann in Caulfield. So that's also an option that we can look into if we have interest. All right, I think um, that's all the questions we have. We're happy to take questions from the floor if anybody um, wants to ask anything. Looks like Gary wants to ask something. Gary? I was going to ask something, but it's probably the silliest question that came to mind, and I'm very embarrassed to ask it. Um, we, we, we are teachers. There are no silly questions. Oh, uh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> um, no, my, my question is actually in the mechanics around it. How do you deal with the food situation after school? Is that provided or are we, are we expected to load the children up with all sorts of manner of things? No, so we, we do provide a snack after school. Um, it, it normally, it's in the form of a, a packet of um, popcorn and a fruit. Um, and I think that, that normally that's enough for most kids. Um, I think that there are, um, you know, your kid very, very well. And if you think they need a bit extra, then for sure you can pack it in their lunch for after school as well. But we do provide, a, a, you know, a light refreshment for the after school programs. Um, we don't provide food for the before school programs. So um, breakfast or a or a, um, a, a bar on the way is, is definitely something you need to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, just give another 10 seconds for someone else to um, unmute themselves. If not, um, I wanted to really thank you all for coming tonight. Um, you know, the, the Jewish education is really, really important. We are so privileged to be able to be the community organisation to provide it, and we are also... Um, honoured that you've come tonight to hear us out and to see what our program's all about. As Shlomi said, um, you can contact our office anytime to speak to, um, to any of us, but Shlomi's normally the first port of call. Um, and there's also the facility to do that on our website to book in a conversation as well. Um, so if there's any questions you have um, that you didn't want to ask tonight or that you come up with later on, please be in touch um, and... Uh, um, good luck on your decision on, on Jewish education for your children. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.